A few weeks ago, I put out a video about the 2022 NFL rookie class and how bad they have been. I had no idea that video would blow up so much and that you guys would really enjoy these videos examining the various quarterback classes from different years. So far, I've done three of them and they've all done really well. So today, we're going to talk about another quarterback class that is widely be considered one of the worst ever. That is 2007. While it is a little bit before my time, I'm going to do my absolute best to go through that 2007 class, talk about all the quarterbacks who were drafted, all the busts who were drafted, and what ended up happening to them. But before we get started, if you're a big fan of football, be sure to subscribe to the channel, leave a like if you want to support today's video, and let me know what player, team, topic, or draft class I could take a look at next. Now let's get started and talk about just how bad the 2007 quarterback class was. So the first guy we're going to talk about is Matt Moore. He came out of Oregon State and would sign with the Cowboys after the draft and actually ended up with a better career than most quarterbacks on this list. He played pretty well in the preseason and was eventually signed to the Panthers roster after the Cowboys could not land him on their practice squad. He ended up being the backup to both Jake Delhomme and David Carr in Carolina, but really couldn't find consistent playing time when those two got injured. He remained the backup in Carolina from 2007 to 2010 starting five games, and in 2009, he threw for 1,000 yards with eight touchdowns and two picks and established himself as a starter in 2010 before he lost a job to Jimmy Clausen. He'd eventually sign with the Miami Dolphins in 2011 and would become the backup to Chad Henney. He came in relief of Henney a few times during that season, throwing for 2,497 yards with 16 touchdowns and nine interceptions. He was even named the Dolphins 2011 MVP, and he entered 2012 in a quarterback battle with David Garrard and Ryan Tannehill. Unfortunately, he didn't end up winning, and after being a backup for a few more seasons, he became a free agent in 2018 and didn't sign with the team. He eventually signed with the Chiefs in 2019 and became the starter for them when Patrick Mahomes hurt his knee against the Broncos. He led the Chiefs to a 1-1 one -one record, throwing for 659 yards, 4 touchdowns, and 5 picks. The Chiefs would win a Super Bowl that year, and he remained a backup for 2020, though he wouldn't play at all. He retired after 2020 with a career stat line of 7,500 yards, 49 touchdowns, 36 picks, and 32 starts. Not too bad. The next guy we need to talk about is quarterback Tyler Thigpen. I actually did a video on him a couple weeks ago, but he was the last quarterback drafted in 2007. He ended up being picked up by the Vikings in the seventh round after helping build the Coastal Carolina program from nothing. He became the first player from the Big South Conference to ever be drafted, and Thigpen had pretty much no expectations. He ended up being cut by the Vikings immediately, but then he was signed to the Kansas City Chiefs active roster while he was shopping for a PlayStation at Best Buy. The guy has a great story. In Kansas City, he'd make his NFL debut against the Chargers as their starting quarterback Damon Hewer would get injured. In that game, he threw for 41 yards in an interception, and he later got hurt in practice and was done for the year. In 2008, he'd once again be in relief of Damon Heward, throwing for 151 yards. He'd make his first career start against the Falcons the following week, throwing for 128 yards and three interceptions in that one. With the Chiefs really struggling, they started to reorient their offense towards what Thigpen could actually do, and they moved on to the spread. He actually started to play decently well in this new system, even scoring a receiving touchdown against the Buccaneers. That was everywhere on SportsCenter back then. In total for 2008, he threw for 2,600 yards with 18 touchdowns and 12 picks, but unfortunately he would never reclaim that success. The Chiefs didn't want to commit to him, and Matt Castle would come in. He was traded to the Miami Dolphins, where he started one game against the Bears. He then spent some time as a backup with the Bills and the Browns, and was out of the league by 2015, and is now doing real estate. You guys should really check out my full-length video on him. The next guy is a player by the name of Jordan Palmer. He ended up going to UTEP, and he was drafted by Washington in the sixth round. He's actually the brother of Carson Palmer, and after a decorated career with the Miners, he was seen as someone who could have some potential in the NFL. Washington unfortunately would not keep them on their preseason roster, as he was cut before the season even started. From there, he spent a few months with the Arizona Rattlers in the Arena League before he would join his brother with the Cincinnati Bengals. Him and Carson became the first brotherly quarterback duo to ever play in the same game, and that would happen back in 2010. He ended up throwing for 41 yards and two interceptions in relief for Carson in 2008, and then he was cut from the team in 2011. From there, he would spend some time in both Jacksonville and Chicago, and then in Buffalo and Tennessee before he was done. After his playing career was over, he went straight into coaching, where he would help mentor NFL draft prospects before the draft. He then later founded QB Summit, which aims to mentor young quarterbacks in the draft as well, and he helped players such as Patrick Mahomes, Joe Burrow, Josh Allen, and now Bo Nix. In 2022, he was named the XFL's Director of Quarterback Development, and it's clear that Jordan's playing career was built heavily off his last name, and that all along, he was a much better coach and a developer. He's already proven himself, 
and honestly someday he could be a pretty big name in that department. Up next we have a really fun one and that is Troy Smith. This guy was much more lucky than Palmer was as he was both a superstar at Ohio State and he even won the Heisman Trophy. He ended up getting drafted to the Baltimore Ravens in the fifth round and while he was seen as more of a college guy, maybe he could make it work in the NFL. Even though he won the Heisman, scouts were worried about how he played in the national championship and the fact that he was pretty short for a quarterback back in 2007, standing at just six foot tall. He ended up making his debut for the Ravens during his rookie year, and that would come against the Indianapolis Colts. He threw for five total passes and a six yard scramble. After some very poor play from their starter Kyle Bowler, Troy was actually named the starter for their game in week 16. He played extremely poorly in that one, but in their next game against the Steelers, he threw for 171 yards and a touchdown. He finished 2007 with 506 yards and three scores, with two through the air and one on the ground. After 2007, the Ravens would draft Joe Flacco to be their quarterback of the future. Troy was set to be the guy at the beginning of the season, but then he developed a rare syndrome which can cause blood clots in his vein, and that led to the Ravens sitting him, and that led to the Ravens utilizing a two quarterback system in 2008. Joe would pass, and Troy would run. He'd also sometimes line up at receiver, and that didn't turn out to be too successful, as he only threw for one touchdown all season long. Eventually the Ravens moved on from him as he was cut in 2010 and from there he'd sign with the 49ers where he ended up starting a couple of games there while Alex Smith was injured. He ended up throwing for 1100 yards with 5 touchdowns and 4 picks and also ran for over 100 yards and a touchdown on the ground. Unfortunately the 49ers did not re-sign him and he became a free agent. After the 49ers he spent a year in the UFL before being a short term backup for the Steelers and then he spent two years in the CFL with Montreal. He decided to retire from football in 2014, and Troy Smith is definitely an interesting story that I need to do a video on. The next guy on the list was Jeff Rowe. He ended up coming out of Nevada, and he was selected by the Bengals in the fifth round of the 2007 NFL Draft. He would spend the entirety of his rookie year on the bench, and was actually demoted to the practice squad for the next season. Eventually, after he was done there, the Seahawks would pick him up midway through the season, the Seahawks would pick him up midway through the year in 2008, but he did not find any playing time and was cut in 2009. From there, he spent some time on New England's practice squad before falling out of the league entirely. The next guy on the list had a little bit more of a career than Rowe, as we have to talk about Isaiah Stanback. He was one of the more interesting stories in the 2007 draft class as he played quarterback at Washington. He was drafted by the Dallas Cowboys in the fourth round, but Dallas had no intention of playing him at quarterback. He ended up running for nearly 800 yards as a college quarterback, but he also spent some time at receiver. The Cowboys would end up playing him at receiver for two games during his rookie season, but he did not have any stats. He ended up being cut after 2008, and he was plagued with off-the-field injuries after only catching two passes for 24 yards. After Dallas, he would go to New England in 2009, catching a few passes there, but only 22 receiving yards on the whole season. After the Patriots, he bounced around from benches to benches as he played with Seattle in 2010 and the Giants in 2011 before he had finished his career with Jacksonville in 2012. He did not find the field for any of those three teams and would retire from the game in 2013. He kept getting hurt, was never healthy enough to play, and I guess just wasn't even good enough. After football, he tried to get into the WWE, but he would not end up making his cut. It's kind of crazy he ended up being a receiver in the league because he was actually a pretty good quarterback in college. By the time he left the NFL, quarterbacks like Cam Newton and RG3 were already looking good, so I'm not saying he would have been like one of them, but maybe he would have had a little bit of a longer career if they actually let him play quarterback. That's just my thought though. In the third round, the Buffalo Bills would end up taking a quarterback by the name of Trent Edwards out of Stanford. He ended up becoming the backup at Buffalo and would make his NFL debut when the starter would go down in 2007. He ended up completing half of his passes and also threw an interception. A week later in his first career NFL start, he threw for 238 yards, a touchdown, and an interception, and there was some hype going on about his play. He ended up playing okay for the Bills until week 8, when he eventually got hurt and had to sit for another game. He ended up losing his starting job, and in 10 total games, he threw for 1,630 yards with 7 touchdowns and 8 interceptions. Due to his play though, Trent entered 2008 as the starter for the Bills. He ended up leading them to a 4-0 record, but then he got a concussion in the 5th game of the season and that would make things go haywire. When he came back, he ended up struggling, and he would finish the season with 2,700 yards, 11 touchdowns, and 10 picks. Trent would keep getting injured, and he played super poorly in 2009, and he was just always getting sacked, and he ended up suffering another concussion. He was eventually benched in favor of Ryan Fitzpatrick, and would never start another game for the Bills. He ended up being cut in early 2010 by Buffalo, 
and then was later picked up by Jacksonville, where he played in three games. He ended up bouncing around the league for a few years after that, as he was a backup in Oakland, Chicago, and Philadelphia. In 2014, he was done, and then the entirety of his career, he threw for 26 touchdowns and 30 interceptions. As we now enter into the second round, Drew Stanton was a guy who was pretty hyped up. He ended up going to Michigan State, and was taken in the second round by the Detroit Lions. The Lions ended up having high hopes for Stanton, but unfortunately he would injure his knee in training camp and sat out his entire rookie season. He'd eventually make his NFL debut in his second year, as he would come in relief of Dante Culpepper. Funny enough, Stanton would actually throw a touchdown pass on his first career attempt, and would play three games the whole season, but that was his only touchdown. The very next year, the Lions would draft Matt Stafford, meaning Drew was a backup and went to the bench. When the two quarterbacks went down, Stanton ended up having to play in 2009, finishing with 259 yards and 6 interceptions in 3 games. In 2010, he'd once again come up in relief duty as he threw for 700 yards with 4 touchdowns and 3 interceptions. Stanton was pretty much set up to fail, and after being in Detroit, he would sign with the Jets in 2012. He was then also traded to the Colts, and when the Colts drafted Luck, Drew would sit out the entirety of the 2012 season. After Indianapolis, Stanton would go over to Arizona, where he didn't play until his second year, and that only happened after Carson Palmer got hurt. He'd end up playing in relief duty for the Cardinals from 2014 to 2017, before he would sign with the Browns for a few years and end his career in 2020 as a backup in Tampa Bay. In total, he finished his NFL career with 4,000 yards, 20 touchdowns, and 24 interceptions. It's kind of hard to call him a bust, but things also didn't exactly work out for him. He was put in some really difficult situations, and it seemed he got hit a lot. Up next on the list was an older rookie out of BYU, whose name was John Beck. He ended up doing well enough to be selected in the second round, and he was taken by the Miami Dolphins. He spent the majority of his rookie year on the bench, and he was openly considered the team's future starting quarterback. But after the Dolphins started 8-0, they put him into start in Week 11 against the Eagles, and in that game, he would struggle and only completed 40% of his passes. He's also the Dolphins starter for their infamous mud game against the Steelers, and in total, he'd end up throwing for 560 yards with one touchdown and three picks. This would come in five games, and after that, he was set to be the starting quarterback in 2008. Unfortunately, the Dolphins would replace him with Chad Henney in the draft, and he wouldn't play at all in 2008, and they cut him in 2009. After that, he'd spend the next year with the Baltimore Ravens, and would not play a snap for them during the regular season, and then was traded to Washington for the 2010 season. He was the backup quarterback behind Rex Grossman in Washington, and then would make his debut for them in 2011 against the Eagles. He also became a spot starter for a few games, and in 2011, he threw for 800 yards with two touchdowns and four interceptions. After a short stint in Houston as a bench quarterback, he eventually decided to go to Canada and play in the CFL. He ended up playing two years with them in 2014 and 2015, and then he called it a career. Finally, we get into some of the really big names, and the first one was Kevin Cobb. Eagles fans were anxiously awaiting their new franchise quarterback, and they eventually decided to go at Kevin Cobb out of Houston. He was pretty good there, but many fans were not too happy about this. Cobb would not play in 2007, before he'd make his debut in 2008, when Donovan McNabb was benched. In total, Cobb threw for 144 yards and four interceptions, and he clearly was not ready for the league. His first start came in 2009 after McNabb got hurt, and he threw a 70-yard touchdown pass to Deshaun Jackson. The very next week, he would start against the Chiefs, throwing for 327 yards and two touchdowns, and this started a hype train. Before 2010, the Eagles would trade Donovan McNabb to Washington, and Kevin became the full-fledged starter. Sadly, he got concussed in his very first start, and this famously led to the Michael Vick comeback year. Cobb ended up finishing 2010 with 1,197 yards, seven touchdowns, and seven picks, and then was traded to Arizona. Kevin unfortunately would struggle in Arizona, as he kept getting injured which limited his playing time, and in just 9 games, he threw for 1,900 yards, 9 touchdowns, and 8 picks. It was more the same the next season, as he got hurt and was eventually benched in favor of John Skelton. He threw for just under 1,200 yards, 8 touchdowns, and 3 picks, and after that, he was cut by Arizona and signed by the Bills in 2013. During the preseason for the Bills though, he would suffer a severe concussion and then was signed to the practice squad and released. After all these concussions, he decided to retire from football in 2014, and Cobb will go down as a huge what if. At number 2, we get to talk about Brady Quinn. He was the second quarterback off the board in 2007 after a great career at Notre Dame. He was considered to be a franchise quarterback, and he fell to the Browns at pick number 22, and was expected to be their third string quarterback behind both Derek Anderson and Charlie Fry. He would end up making his NFL debut in their final game in 2007, and in that game he'd complete 3 of 8 passes. In 2008, Brady ended up being the back of the Derek Anderson, but started in the Browns 9th game after a 3-5 start. Cleveland would barely lose, but he'd play better in the next week against the Bills, 
only to hurt his hand. He tried to play through it the next week, but eventually he had to have season-ending surgery. He would be named the Browns starter in 2009, but he'd go back and forth with Derek Anderson for that job and would honestly struggle. In 10 games that season, Quinn threw for 1,300 yards, 8 touchdowns, and 7 picks. After that, he'd be a backup in Denver before he would sign with the Chiefs to back up Matt Castle in 2012. Once Matt went down with injury, Brady would step into the starting role, only to get hurt a couple games later. He finished his time in KC with 1,100 yards, 2 touchdowns, and 8 interceptions. He bounced around the league for a few more years before he would retire in 2015. After that, he ended up being hired as an analyst for Fox in 2019 and has been there ever since. Last but not least, we get to talk about the infamous Jamarcus Russell. Given his massive size and incredible arm talent, it was no surprise that Russell was taken first overall in the 2007 NFL Draft by the Oakland Raiders. Unfortunately though, there were warning signs all over the place. The Lions general manager warned of issues they had detected during the interview process, and he would sit out the majority of the preseason before signing his rookie deal, and he didn't play until December. In his debut for the Raiders, he threw for 56 yards and wouldn't even throw his first career touchdown pass until the next week. In the meantime, he threw three interceptions and also had a fumble. He and the Raiders would struggle hard during his rookie season as he finished with 373 yards, two touchdowns, and four picks. He'd be named the starter going into 2008, and he'd actually be okay, but nowhere near what you'd expect for the first overall pick. He threw for 2,400 yards, 13 touchdowns, and eight interceptions, and it was more of the same in 2009. His numbers would regress, and he ended up having 11 interceptions. After that, there were so many stories that were coming out about him in Oakland, like him flat out just not studying the playbook, and him becoming overweight because of his addiction to cough syrup. The Raiders would release him in 2010, trade for Jason Campbell, and even file a grievance against Jamarcus to get his salary back. After that, he floated around the NFL for a couple of tryouts, but never signed to another football team. Some called him the biggest bust in NFL history, but in 2022, Jamarcus released a series of essays on the Players' Tribune and detailed his troubled career and his struggles with his mental health. While there was definitely more to the Jamarcus Russell story than poor play on the field, he did not live up to that number one overall pick, and unfortunately he will get the title of bust. So yeah, in today's video we took a look back at the 2007 quarterback class, went through these guys and how their careers turned out. For the most part, it was a bunch of duds, and also a bunch of what ifs. I really enjoyed going through this, as I really didn't even start watching football till 2013, so it was cool getting brushed up on all these different players and the hyped up quarterbacks of the past. I tried to do the best job I could, and if there's something I got wrong, I do apologize. But what do you guys think? What do you think of the 2007 quarterback class? Who was the biggest bust, and what surprised you? Be sure to let me know down below, leave a like if you want to support today's video, subscribe if you're new, and check out all my other videos on the end screen, including my video about the 2017 quarterback class. Hope to see you guys again soon, but until next time, peace.